lady fingers up the back. So it's done, obviously, as a round cake, and it comes out like a slice of cake or a slice of pie. Uh, this one's still sitting in its little container for ease and takeout. Um, there's also uh, lots of variations in, uh, in taste among these. I'll show you this one. You can hardly see the layers of ladyfinger left in this. You know, all those, those elements I told you before, they're just layered together in a dish, basically. Because this one is soaked very long. It's very, it's over-soaked. That's one of the criteria for judging quality in tiramisu. How long do you soak it? We'll talk about that more in a moment. This one has a very dry crumb. See this part down here? It's um, somehow not soaked enough. That one's soaked too much, this one not soaked enough. This one, which is sort of split open on top, well, I don't even have to taste this, I can tell you that it's got a very weird texture uh, in this creamy part here. It looks like either overbeaten whipped cream or something like ricotta cheese or maybe some kind of artificial cream that was used in it. You know, once again, of course, as with all cooking, you've got to use great raw ingredients to start with. Doesn't prevent me from taking a little taste. But, um, now this one um, also has kind of a weird texture in this cream on top. And you know, very often, it does not have a really nice coffee taste though, but very often uh, you will see many layers in a tiramisu. I think the more elegant ones do show all the layers. This one seems to just have basically two layers, so there's a little bit of an in-between layer there. Um, it's got a kind of heavy gummy. It, it tastes to me like maybe they use cream cheese in this instead of mascarpone. Um, this one, actually, I like the look of this one. Can you see, you see the lady fingers in there? They were laid on their side, and then all the layering occurred. There's a layer of lady finger down there. There's a layer of lady finger there. Um, and it has, I tasted it before, I pre-tasted it, Mm. A very nice, light creaminess, not over-soaked, and a good coffee flavor. The only problem is right about now, the stale cake flavor hits. <clears throat> you don't need, you know, I mean, basically you're soaking whatever kind of cake or ladyfinger you put in here, but if the stuff tastes stale to begin with, it's not going to be any good. Here. Mm. There's a ni nice, fluffy, light uh, sort of egg white creaminess on top, but to me it tastes severely over-soaked on the bottom. Hey, I'm a perfectionist. That's what this is all about. Come back in a moment. I'll show you the best recipe for tiramisu that I've ever seen. Why, it's time to pick me up. <clears throat> and I'm going to try to make sure that this is not so heavy that it lays me down. Uh, I've got eight egg yolks in this bowl. I've beaten them together well, and I'm adding a third of a cup of sugar. And just mix that together until the color is slightly lightened of the egg yolks. Now here, I've got my mascarpone, which um, is, there's some controversy as to whether it's a double cream or a triple cream, uh, but it usually comes from the Lombardy region in northern Italy, and you simply beat it into this, it's a good idea to beat it in, sort of in stages. Otherwise, it'll be, uh, be much more difficult to incorporate. Um, there's some speculation about the history of mascarpone. It actually seems to go back a really long time. Um, there's a document from the 12th century that comes from Lake Como, which is nearby. And um, the document seems to indicate that the mascarpone, what was called mascarpone at that time, was actually like a um, ricotta cheese. Today it's not like that at all, as you can see. I mean, take a look at this. You see the, um, it, it looks something like a cream cheese, but it's a little bit uh, runnier than an American cream cheese. So it's so, I like to think of it as somewhere between cream cheese, creme fraiche, sour cream, somewhere in there. Whatever it is, it's definitely fattening. <laughs> and. Uh, I don't recommend eating a great deal of tiramisu, but just a little bit after the meal. Just a little bit of a pickup as a dessert is a very nice thing. Okay, that's um, just about incorporated. Now, I have here some whipped cream. I whipped a cup of cream. See how nice and smooth that is? I whipped a cup of cream, and I got this result. And now I'm going to uh, fold this into the 
egg yolk mixture. And here's the part that really keeps it on the pick me up rather than the lay me down side. Because these are, these are things that are filled with air. I've got uh, whipped cream that's going in right now. In a moment, I've got egg yolks that are going to go in. And this is what keeps this whole mixture. I mean, it's a nice, it's really a very nice way to treat mascarpone, which can become, you know, quite a heavy thing to eat. And there's a lot of it. There's a pound of it in this recipe. But I'm lightening it with the egg yolk. I mean, with the uh, whipped cream and with the egg white. Let's cut this in. Ah, uh, yes. One or two of the tiramisus that I tasted uh, a few moments ago had a certain kind of lightness that, even though they all had problems, <laughs> that uh, distinguished them from the other ones. And you, you can see what's going to happen in this one. Um, there's going to be a wonderful kind of fluffiness to it that keeps an essentially heavy dessert fairly light. There we go. Don't overfold. Of course, it's nicer to just preserve the air and keep the volume in your mixture. Okay? Now. Take um, about a third of this mixture. I'm going to build the tiramisu right in this bowl. So for starters, I'm going to slide in about a third of this mixture into the bowl. There we go. Lay it down. And now comes that magic moment when we start soaking the lady fingers. And the soaking is really fast. Dip, dip, that's it. See? Now some of the uh, tiramisu that we tasted a few moments ago had real problems because they had been in this little dip much longer than what I'm doing right here. But this is a real secret in making tiramisu. Believe me, plenty of this stuff is going to go into the dish. You don't need to soak more than a second. A couple of moments ago, I took one of these lady fingers and I soaked it for about five seconds. I can do that for you if you want. It became kind of a soggy mess. What I'm soaking in is espresso. Oh, and by the way, I've got here two-thirds of a cup of brandy. <laughs> if you like, you can add some of this to the espresso mixture. This, of course, is cold espresso. Well, look what's happening already. Watch this. Can you see this? It's just a soggy mess already. And that was just five or six seconds. Okay, so I'm adding some of this. I know I, I didn't put it on those, but it does. I don't think anybody will know the difference. Um, and then you build about a third of these into a nice bottom layer. You can make this dish as well. Actually, um, it's kind of nice in a rectangular baking dish. Um, but it works as well in a, in a, gla in a large glass bowl. Uh, what I like to do is, I like the flavor of the complementary flav flavors of chocolate and coffee. So what I like to do is uh, sprinkle a little bit of this grated chocolate over each layer of the tiramisu. Not so much so as you'd know it's there, but just, just a little bit for a little flavor enhancement, a little deepening of the flavor. Then, it's time for the second third of your mixture, right over the top. Very nice. I like the way it's retaining its light fluffiness. I know your arteries are clogging just looking at this. Um, but remember, this bowl that I'm making here, this is for a really big party. I mean, I think that this is going to serve something like, I don't know, 24 people at a party, something like that. So you only get a little bit each. Shall we continue? Um, now, a big question about uh, tiramisu is at what temperature and at what time after making do you serve it? Some people like to serve it immediately when it has the most crunch in the lady fingers and it has the freshest taste. I would say that freshness really is a big factor in tiramisu uh, because a number of the ones that I tasted a few moments ago really tasted like they were running out of steam, like maybe they'd been made a couple of days ago. Bad idea. You definitely have to make it that day for tiramisu, otherwise it loses that lovely, buoyant, fresh quality. All right, I'm going to round this out with the... Lady fingers. Um, some people like to take it and hold it for a couple of hours. And what they do is they hold it like in the refrigerator for, let's say, two hours. Um, and I like it pretty much at that stage. I think it's come together nicely. I, I prefer that to the tiramisu that is like freshly made. Like a, freshly made, I mean like serving this one that I'm making right now in about five minutes from now. I think I prefer it when it's in the refrigerator for a couple of hours. Then some people, as a matter of fact, um, Pat Wells, in her recent book on Italian food called uh, Trattoria, advocated the frozen tiramisu. She said, actually, she doesn't really like tiramisu that much. Let me put my layer of chocolate on here. She said she doesn't like tiramisu that much, but when she tasted it frozen, she said it transformed it into um, a completely different dessert. It lost its tiramisu-ness and became something else, and she was quite fond of it. And I like it that way as, as well, but for my taste, it doesn't really seem much like tiramisu. Though you should try it sometime to see if it's a... Uh, a confection that pleases you. Anyway, 
Uh, you have just watched before your very eyes a tiramisu being made. It's really rather simple, as you can tell. I want to show you, I've got a couple in the, um, in the cooling units over there that, let me just try to smooth this off on top, that are at various stages. And I'll tell you what, why don't we dive into them and see what the different textures look like before I pick my favorite one and sit down at the table. Um, over the top, you can, if you want, add more grated chocolate. You could add curls of chocolate. And also there's um, cocoa powder, which you noticed before was on quite a few of them. Uh, you can do this uh, liberally or conservatively <laughs> or middle of the road or whatever you like. So on, this up to you. Be creative. Be artistic. Let me take a look at these two. This one I made about two hours ago. And you see it's still got... So oh, look at that quiver. You see it's still moving nicely in the bowl. Can you see that quiver on top? And this one I made much earlier today. And I think you can see that it's got no quiver left at all. I mean, it's, it is hard as a rock, and it really is a totally different dessert. Let's take a little poke in here. Feel that? Look, look, look how hard it is for me to get the knife in there. It's, it's a frozen thing. It's like, you know, it's like ice cream. It's frozen cream. This one, ooh, just all coming together very nicely with the lady fingers still holding their shape, as I hope you can see right here. And this one, well, just a runny kind of mess. Interestingly, this part is runny. You know, the cream seizes together better in this one. Here, the cream is runnier and lighter. But of course, the lady fingers have more um, crunch. You can hear, listen. You can hear the crunch of the lady fingers in that one. Um, and it's a better contrast of textures. So it's up to you. Take your choice. I'm going to take mine in a moment, and I'll see you. Tiramisu time. Now, I have two variations for you to look at. Uh, first of all, this, of course, is the frozen one. And uh, when you slice it out of the bowl, as you can see, um, if you really like order in your tiramisu, maybe this is the one for you because it makes a very orderly tiramisu. Uh, you can see the layers. Your friends can be astonished at the perfect architecture of your tiramisu. Um, it, of course, it is, it's quite cold. It's a, real, it's a frozen dessert. It's like a semi-fredo. Um, it's a little soft. Uh, if, you, uh, if you like the architecture, but if you don't like the extreme uh, hardness of it and the chill of it, you can leave it like this. You can, make the, you can freeze it and then slice it while it's frozen and then let it sit, you know, maybe for half an hour to an hour at room temperature and watch it soften and then just serve it um, at the perfect stage. Of course, you've probably got better things to do than to watch your tiramisu soften. Um, so that's one possibility. But here's my real secret on tiramisu. Two secrets. First one is I got my recipe from Valentino in Santa Monica, California, uh, which is uh, it's one of the best tiramisus that I've ever had anywhere. Uh, I modified the recipe a bit. I added the brandy. They don't do the brandy part, sort of my natural inclination. Um, but what I like about it is that I'm not very obsessive about the order in my tiramisu. Um, I don't need to see the architecture. I know I can build a cake anytime I want to. I love the sort of sensuous creaminess of this tiramisu. And as you can see, it's just sort of sliding and slithering all over my plate in this lovely, foamy cloud of egg and sugar and mascarpone. Um, I've also included uh, a number of uh, curls of chocolate which I think a wonderful complimentary flavor. And I've got some of the cocoa on top. And, um, you know, it's just basically it's a, a hedonist delight. Now, what are we going to drink with this hedonist delight? Well, it's kind of tricky to find the right uh, wine for tiramisu. Um, some people have suggested drinking coffee, espresso. I don't think it's a great idea. You know why? Because you really want the payoff of espresso flavor in this. If you drink a shot of straight espresso with it, you're not going to taste the coffee so much in the dessert. So I save the coffee part for the dessert. And instead, I choose to drink some brown wines, which seem to me to go very nice, brown dessert wines, which seem to me to be you know, the per perfectly in key with this dessert. You can go for rich ones. You can drink like a, uh, a tawny port, or you can drink a sweet Madeira, like a Malmsey, or you can drink a sweet Marsala, and there are some very good sweet Marsalas. We don't usually see them here, but from Sicily. Um, or you can drink a Vinsanto from Tuscany, which is a wine that's made from 
grapes that they've allowed to sit out for months and dry out, and then they make wine out of it. It's got a slightly higher alcoholic content. This one that I have right here, actually they call this Vino Santo, because this is not a Tuscan one. It's made in, in neighboring Umbria. And they have to, in Umbria, they have to be a little different. So they called it a Vino Santo, but usually it's called Vin Santo. Who was the third baseman for the Chicago Cubs? No, he wasn't. Um, now, I have another wine here that's called Malvasia della Lipare, which is a Sicilian dessert wine, 13.5% alcohol, kind of on the sweet side. It's made from the Malvasia grape, and I think it is just about perfect with tiramisu. Let me, allow me, oh, see, I get a little resistance to my spoon. I can tell that the lady fingers, this is the two hour soaking job, and the lady fingers are still alive. They still have texture. It's silk. It's happiness. It's goodbye. See you next time. Remember, life is a matter of taste.